So in this video, I'm going to go over how to solve a right triangle, given a couple pieces of information. So we need to be given the fact that it's a right triangle, as evidenced by the little box in the corner at angle C. So now I know it's a right triangle. This triangle is not drawn to scale, uh, but they're giving us two other pieces of information, which is that capital B, which is an angle, is 18 degrees. So we can label that inside angle B. And it's also telling me that lowercase c is 24. That is not a degree measurement. That's a side length. So side length c is 24. That's going to be the longest side of this triangle because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. That's called the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The easiest thing to solve for when we have this much information, if we're trying to figure out everything else in the triangle, is angle A because all triangles have to add up to 180 degrees. So the angle A is going to equal 180 degrees minus the 90 and minus the 18. <clears throat> and that'll tell us what angle A is. So we're going to say angle A is 72 degrees. All right, so now we've got one more piece of information that angle A is 72. We're still trying to find side A and side B. Um, because solving the triangle means to find all of the missing pieces of information. So at this point, I want to try to use only the 18 and 24 that were given to me in the question, just in case 72 ends up being wrong or I made a careless mistake. It's best if you can base the rest of your work on just the two pieces of given information which you know are correct. So if I'm trying to find, um, let's go with side A, we'll go in alphabetical order, side A, I want to base it on the angle 18. To the angle 18, this is the adjacent side. The 24, as we established at the beginning, is the hypotenuse. So if I have a hypotenuse that I'm looking for adjacent, I need from Soka Toa to choose the trig ratio that talks about adjacent and hypotenuse, which here is going to be the cosine. So we want to write an equation that says cosine, which is abbreviated COS, of 18. Extremely important that you put the angle there next to your cosine. You should never have cosine floating on its own. It has to be the cosine of an angle. Equals adjacent side, which is the one we don't know, the adjacent leg, we'll call it A, over the hypotenuse. We can then solve this equation for A, which is the variable, by multiplying both sides by 24. And 24 times the cosine of 18 is a number. I don't know it. No one has it memorized. We go to a calculator, and we make sure that our calculator is in degree mode. So I'm going to go to my TI Inspire. I'm going to open up a new document and add a calculator page in order to do 24 multiplied by the cosine of 20, uh, sorry, of 18. And it's 22.8. I can see that my calculator is in degree mode. It says it up here above where that answer just popped up. Uh, and if your, answer, if your calculator is in radian mode, your answer will be wrong. So 22.8 ends up being the length of side A. Notice sides are lowercase, angles are capital. And then I still have to find B. So again, I'm going to try to use the original information, which is the 18 and the 24, to find side B, which is the opposite side, still using the hypotenuse. And so that tells me that I would like to use sine. So I'll set up another equation, the sine of 18. Remember, sine, cosine, and tangent are always done to an angle. So sine of 18 will equal opposite, which is leg B over the hypotenuse, which is 24. And again, we'll multiply by 24 on both sides to isolate the B. So 24 times the sine of 18. We'll go over to the calculator and get that. 24 times sine of 18 is 7.4. So B equals 7.4. And that's sufficient. It's good to check in the end that your answers make sense. So if I clear all of this, I want to make sure that the picture makes sense. So we have 72 and 18 as our angles. This was a 24. This was a 22.8. And this was a 7.4. So I'm checking to see that each angle is across from its appropriate side. So the biggest angle, which is 90 degrees, is across from the longest side, which is 24. The smallest angle, which is 18 degrees, is across from the smallest side, which is 7.4. And then the medium-sized angle of 72 is across from a 22.8. So this triangle does make sense and now is solved for.
I could have also used the Pythagorean theorem once I had two sides, but again, we want to try to use only the given information, and using Pythagorean theorem would have required me to use the 22.8 that I found, and if I'm not 100% confident that that's correct, I'm better off doing it this way where I'm relying only on the information that's given in the problem. And that is all.